Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks out there. This is your host, your meteorologist, D.T. from weatherrisks.com. This is another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. It's December 16th. It's 10.30 p.m. We're running a little late here, but a lot to do today besides weather, Christmas stuff. So let's get right to it. A lot to talk about here, including some historically significant weather in history. And I'll start out by taking a look and reminding you that today is the 68th anniversary of the Battle of the Bulge. It started December 16th at 5.30 in the morning with a massive artillery barrage. Uh, what your image here you're looking at is a cover to one of the better games by the L2 Design Group that makes a great game on the, the Battle of the Bulge. There's a lot of very good games on the Battle of the Bulge. It's one of the more popular topics that's simulated. And it has been and represents to this day the single, the single biggest pitch battle in the history of the United States Army conditions. All right, let's take a look what's going on here in the U.S. A little brief history lesson there. <clears throat> we can continue to see that the NAO is uh, running negative here for the next uh, seven or eight days. Then after that, it moves towards neutral. Uh, this is the actual NAO here. And um, we can see this is the, the overall, overall NAO right here. You can see all the models right here. All keep a neutral. I uh, negative through this December 20th. There's Christmas days. And then it begins to rise up here a little bit towards neutral. This is the west-based NEO calculation. This is all by Greenland and Canada. And you can see it's all very negative right through Christmas Day. And then slowly begins to move up. And this is because of a pretty big blocking pattern which is developing in eastern Canada. Or at least is supposed to develop in eastern Canada. We'll go with that. We'll get into that in a second. And then uh, as we look, uh, this is the eastern-based NEO over in here. Let me call this up here. You can see it. This is the Eastern Base NEO. This is over by uh, Iceland and the UK. Not nearly as deep. So this is clearly a West Base NEO. The PNA, this is our trough on the West Coast. Remember, this is trough on the West Coast when it's negative. Here it is, very negative, and it slowly pushes up. But even towards the end, it's still negative. And then this is the EPO. This is the uh, whether or not we have a ridge on the West Coast. We have a ridge on the West Coast on December 20th, and it drops back down here a little bit negative. And then it's neutral again by December 24th, and stays neutral all the way through. So that's what it's telling us. So what we think here is going to happen is that this is the big deal here, that all this, a uh, lot of blocking right in this whole area, a lot of blocking down here. That's what's important about this. So we'll see if that actually is the case or not, but that's what the models are showing. Now, this is uh, the uh, European here from this afternoon, the Sunday afternoon run of the European, valid for December 20th. And we can see our big mid mid Midwest storm here. Here's the low here. There's the cold front here. The Arctic front's back in this way. A lot of warm air coming up here. Very impressive system. Big snow all up in this area, no doubt about it. And then uh, the next day, this is uh, December 21st, the low has now moved uh, this way straight up into here and we can see here's the Arctic front here like this probably a lot of storms in this area here and then the real Arctic front coming in this way and here's the cold air pouring southward now this is not nearly as cold as what the European was showing on Saturday this is vastly different but uh, that we'll get to those changes in a second and see how the models are doing with that and now this is for December 22nd and again, as I said here, the European model from on Saturday had a lot more cold air. So all the purple stuff, this is all way down in here. Now it's keeping it up there. So that's a big change as well. Here's the low. It's gone like it's gone from here all into this area. And now it's going to go up into here. And there's some cold air and wind down in this way. But this is a big change for what the models were showing with respect to how much cold air is coming southward. Now, this was the European model from early Sunday morning for day 10. As you can see, this is for the evening of Christmas evening. See right in here, this is Christmas evening. And it's got the big low in here, not on the East Coast. And what happens is, is that it just develops the big low and takes it this way. And the reason for that is because there's no blocking in Canada at all. There's nothing. That's a totally different, not, that's not what the model's been showing for days and days and days. So I discounted it. I don't think it's the correct solution. It might be. I'm just not going that way. Um, this is the European model from this afternoon. This is for, uh, this is for I guess, for... Uh, January 20, uh, December 26th, I should say. And uh, what's happened here is now we can see a lot more cold air. See all the Arctic air coming southward? Now, this is uh, this is a big snowstorm all up in here. Let me change colors here for a second. Uh, we'll go, um, yeah. All this in here, this is a big snowstorm all up in a really bit of cold air. Now, here we've got, we still have north winds coming down and the high this way. So even though the rain snow line is over or north of Richmond, all this is probably ice in here. This is all probably ice in here. The low tries to move up, and then it reforms and jumps to the coast. But this could be an ice storm for portions of North Carolina, Virginia, and Maryland if this model turned out to be correct by day 10. Now, uh, this is uh, day 9, the uh, European model here. 
And um, this is how this develops. In other words, this map, excuse me, go back again. This is how we get to it. And this is day 10. This is here uh, day 9. Some of you calls up. This is day 9 in here. Okay, got it. So what happens is here's the low. It's coming up this way. Look at this huge Arctic high, 1042 millibars. You can see the cold air coming southward. See the big low? Still funneling the cold air southward. So the cold air is definitely in place. And then, like I said, that's December 25th, Christmas Day, and this is December 26th. You follow me? And again, the low is coming up here, or it's trying to come up here. And then we have the cold air coming south this way. And this could, like I said, this all in here could be an ice storm right up in here. Okay, now uh, longer term, this is the uh, map here for uh, the hemispheric shot for Christmas Day. What's happened is that this is the only we have blocking up in this area in here, and we can see the block. Let me highlight it here so you can see what, what the blocking they're referring to. This is the blocking up in here, and as a result, that's why we have the trough and the possible winter storm. If this is gone, then we're going to warm up again big time. This polar vortex, this PV, represents the heart of the cold air. This is all massively cold, bitter Arctic air. But the problem is, it's on the wrong side of the hemisphere. This is Asia. We want to see this whole feature over here, and it's not. That's the problem. We want to see this feature over on this side of the world, and it's not. And then what happens is that once this blocking is gone, the whole pattern collapses. Not good. In the meantime, let's take a look at this other event, the possible event for December 25, 26. All right. I presented this early on the Facebook page, but essentially, uh, this is the upper air map here. And you can see the, this has got the surface features on it. These are the same maps, different model projections. Uh, this is from the European Center. This is from Alan Huffman's website. And um, what we're seeing here is, let me call this up, is... Uh, this is the upper low that comes in for the west coast. We all see that, right? Now, here's a blocking pattern up in this area. And there's the 50-50 low. So the energy, this if this is correct, if this is correct, this has to go here. It cannot go into the Great Lakes. You see, this is not possible. It has to go this direction because of this feature and the blocking here. Now, if these features are not here, okay, if they're not there, then we have a Great Lake storm. It's that simple. It really is quite that simple. Let's go. We can see the difference. This is the uh, European model here on the uh, left-hand side from this from this morning. This is the GFS from this morning. There's no blocking up in here at all. This is just a, a negative NEO, but there's not a blocking ridge. So any storm in here it goes this way. Storms in here go this way, maybe a little underneath it. But if we look at the updated version, look at the difference. This, this. See all this in here? This. Is, let me show you what I'm talking about. All this in here, this is the blocking pattern. This low and this. This low and this. Here, same thing. Here and here. It's not there. Now it is. So the models are having a great deal of trouble handling the blocking pattern. And we end up with this sort of feature, day 10. And again, this does not make any sense to me because if the European is correct here, here's the blocking pattern and here's the, upper, here's the 500 low over southeastern Canada. That for, that means the system has to cannot do this. It has to go here. It has to go underneath it. It has to. It's the basic laws of physics. It so Now, what we don't know is whether or not the European model is correct at day 10. But if it is, that's what it means. And then we can see this because this is the uh, European ensemble at 500 millibars. Again, the point here is, this is remember, this is an average of 51 European models. See this? This is the block up in here. And this. So any energy here has to go here. It has to. It cannot go to the Great Lakes. If that is correct, we don't know if it is. That's the point. That's what we have to figure out. If the blocking pattern over eastern Canada stays strong, if it does, then the low coming in the southwest will have to go to the winter east coast. It has to. The stronger the blocking, the more the southern track, the low December 25th, will take to the East Coast. The weaker the blocking, the more it goes up towards the Great Lakes. It's just that simple. Now, here is the European Ensemble for Day 10. Notice, much weaker blocking up in here. See this? Much weaker blocking here. And as a result, the low is now in Oklahoma and heads up towards the Ohio Valley Midwest. That simple. 
And here it is at day 10, same sort of thing. There's the low in Kentucky, and it's going into Virginia. So it's, it's, this is, that means that you're snow up in here, but down in this area, you're rain. And, of course, you're all uh, snow up in here. Snow, snow, this is all rain down in here. So, again, weaker blocking. Blocking here is weaker, is weaker up in here, and you have the system tracking further to the north. This is the European, this is, excuse me, the 18Z GFS. It's got the system further to the south. Why? More blocking. That's why. Here it is at uh, day 10. And the other one was uh, day 11, 10 and a half. Same sort of thing. You can see it coming there and then here. There and here. And again, this represents, as you can see, potentially an ice storm coming down this way with the cold air damming. Okay. We went through that one. Now, this is the MJO. Now, I'm going to talk about this for one second because how do we know what, what weather model is correct? Well, we're going to talk about the MJO here because that gives us information. The MJO is a burst of convection. You see this thing here? And it moves along and it moves along and it moves along. And what it does is, as it moves this way, as it moves here, it sends out shock waves of energy. So with this energy ends up moving towards the... Uh, Gulf of Alaska towards the Bering Sea and alters the jet stream patterns. So that's what the MJO does. That's why it's important. And we can track this because each one of these phases means different things depending on the month. For example, this is the MJO here now. We're forecasting this out to December 30th. And it's in phase one. You can see that. And it's in phase two. See this little doohickey line? That's what the model's forecasting. See this right here? Whoop. Okay. Now, that means something. And then in this goes out to the January, right in here, as you can see. And what it does again is look, it goes phase one, phase two in December, and then early January goes all the way through here. And then by mid January, it's about to move into phase seven and eight again. Now, why is that important? This is the pattern for phase two. Remember, we saw this phase two. See that? Okay. This is the pattern for phase two. There it is. Right there. What is that telling us? That in December, you get a big ridge on the West Coast and a big trough from the eastern United States. That's what it's telling us. This looks like a snowstorm pattern. We'll see if it is. This is January Phase 7. And, then, and that means in mid-January, sometime after the 15th, it's, we're going to get a very amplified pattern again. That's, that's what the MJO is telling us. If it gets to Phase 7 by mid-January, the pattern is going to turn cold and stormy again. This is the pattern in phase 8 in January. Also, you can see big ridge here on the west coast. See the ridge right up in here? There's your trough. That's a cold, stormy pattern. Don't know if it's going to work out, but that's what the MJO is saying. So anyway, that's the forecast, and that's how I see it. Um, I still believe that the event's going to come on December 26th. Uh, where it hits on the East Coast, I'm, I still don't know that. I think it's going to be more to the south because of the blocking pattern. I don't think it's going to the Great Lakes, but... Um, this is a risky forecast. There's no two ways about it. Once the blocking breaks down, the cold pattern will go away, and it will probably warm up significantly, especially in the first uh, s several days of January. That's what it looks like to me. This is Meteorologist DET. I'll talk to you soon.